What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Sony FS5. Now, the reason we're doing this test right now is because the FS5 Mark II is gonna be coming out soon, and I wanna be able to do a comparison between the two of them. We're gonna look at a couple different tests, and then I'm gonna show you some sample footage from this camera, starting off with the ISO performance, going from 2,000 all the way up to 25,600, and then we're gonna do the exposure recovery test, so over and underexposing the image about five stops, and then bringing it back to our proper exposure. All of our camera settings are gonna be in the description below if you wanna read more about them. But without further ado, let's jump right into the first test looking at the ISO performance of the FS5. So starting off with ISO 2000, we're going from an S-Log to a graded 709. You'll also notice in the upper right hand corner we have a 300% crop in, so you can see in a little better detail what's actually happening. Going up to 6400 ISO, we're still having a pretty clean image. There is a little bit of noise dancing around there in the crop in, but we aren't getting too much of that color, which is really great. Up to 12,800 ISO, again, a really solid ISO that could be cleaned up with some noise reduction, and we're not getting a lot of that color noise. Going up to 25,600 ISO, this is starting to push the limits of what any sort of noise reduction can do, and we're also getting a little bit of a softening up of the image. 56,200 ISO, we're starting to get a ton of noise in those shadow areas and a really softening up of the image overall. And then lastly, 102,400 ISO, this is completely unusable, really terrible looking digital noise. So that's the high ISO performance test of the Sony FS5. Let me know in the comments below how high you would push this ISO. Next up, let's take a look at the exposure recovery, starting with underexposure. So here we are with our correct exposure. We're at an F8 ISO 3200, which is the native ISO for S-Log3 on the FS5. Now going into our first stop of underexposure, on the left you can see the actual shot, so the underexposed shot, and on the right is the recovered shot, and in the middle again is that correct exposure. Going down to two stops underexposed, we are able to get most of the information back, but we're seeing a little bit of noise in those deep shadow areas, and we're starting to see a little bit of a color shift. That color shift becomes more noticeable as we go down another stop to negative three stops underexposed, and we're getting a lot more of that noise and that color noise in there. Going to four stops underexposed, this is pretty much unusable. We're having a ton of color noise in there. You're gonna see a lot of magentas and greens in that noise, and it's just not very pleasing. Going to five stops underexposed, we're a pretty dark exposure here, and you can see that in the recovered shot, we're bringing all of that noise level back up. Now going back to our correct exposure, we're at an F8 ISO 3200 again, and we're gonna overexpose the image. On the left is that actual shot, and the one on the right is the recovered shot. This is one stop overexposed, and we're able to get all of that detail back in those highlight areas. Next up, we're gonna take a look at two stops overexposed, and S-Log3 does a really good job at keeping that highlight data, so we're able to recover all of that in our post-production. Going to three stops overexposed, we're really, really bright on that actual shot and we're able to recover most of the information, especially in my skin tones, which is the most important thing. We are losing it in some of the very bright areas like the mug and the paint swatch on the wall. And then once we go up to four stops overexposed, this is pretty much unrecoverable. We're losing a lot of detail in my face and pretty much any white or bright area in the shot. And then lastly, we're gonna take a look at five stops overexposed and again, no information is able to be recovered here, especially in all of these brighter areas. We can see a little bit of color, but anything that is white is gonna be unrecoverable. So there you have it. That's the exposure recovery test of the Sony FS5 going over and underexposed, five stops. Next up, let's take a look at some sample footage, then we'll wrap this thing up.
Hope you guys enjoyed this camera test of the Sony FS5. If you want to try this camera out for yourself, make sure to head on over to LensProTigo or LensRentals.com. There will be links in the description below as well as in the card right up here. And if you want to see more camera tests just like this one, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.